So to be clear, Mr. Trump has no financial relationships with any Russian oligarchs. That, that's what he said. I, I, that's what I said. That's obviously what the, the, our position is. I'm not aware of uh, any of those activities. I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I didn't have not have communications with the Russians. What do I have to get involved with Putin for? I have nothing to do with Putin. I've never spoken to him. I don't know anything about him other than he will respect me. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. So it is political. You're a communist. No, Mr. Green. Communism is just a red herring. Like all members of the oldest profession, I'm a capitalist. Hello, and welcome to Mueller, She Wrote. This is part five of our special coverage of the Mueller Report. We go over the report page by page and footnote by footnote, providing context and expertise, along with jokes and swears. <laughs> We're so happy to have you with us. I'm your host, A.G., and with me as always are Jaleesa Johnson. Hello. And Jordan Coburn. Hello. Part five. How many parts? There's going to be like 97 parts. I 97 guess. parts. We're I'm still ready. in volume one, man. Yeah, I mean, this is our lives, guys. This is like, this is the real deal. It's what we do. We need to break it down. Yep. Breaking it down. Hell yeah. I'm yeah. going to be able to like rent a car on my own or something by the time that's over. Yeah. So today we're going to be covering section four, numbers three and four, titled Carter Page and Dimitri Symes and the Center for National Interest. And that goes from page 95 to 108. Um, and we're going to start putting those page numbers in the description so that you can bone up and read ahead. So we'll uh, make sure that that's included in the description, in the episode description. So uh, again, today, page 95 to page 108. And um, in part four, we covered uh, Papadopoulos and the Trump Tower Moscow project, which is still very much at the center of the investigation into Trump and whether or not he or any of his campaign aides are Russian assets or otherwise compromised by a foreign adversary. And uh, potentially making hundreds of millions of dollars off a real estate project that would require to h him to get the go-ahead from Putin certainly seems like a conflict of interest to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I guess not to uh, Gomer or Gates or Jim Jordan or Nunes or uh, any of those fuck faces. So on to Hat Boy, Carter Page. Uh, as we know, he worked for the Trump campaign from January 2016 to September 2016. And he, like Papadop, was announced as a foreign policy advisor in March of 2016. According to the footnote here, this information came from FBI interviews of Page prior to Mueller being appointed. And we all know from earlier in the report that when Mueller got there, when he was appointed, there were already just tons of boxes and boxes of uh, interviews and evidence that the FBI turned over to him, including their 302s. And we, we know pretty much the ins and outs of a 302 mm -hmm. from... Um, <laughs> Andrew McCabe's yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He broke it down I for us. I feel like it's important to note that those forms would have been created for them regardless of if an investigation... Like, I'm, that's the whole point mm -hmm. if that is had it happened before Mueller was appointed. So people are going to try to politicize that FBI. Like, why do they have the 302s on them? Well, they were investigating them at the time. They were investigating... Um, Not Mueller, though. No, but the FBI was investigating uh, Trump campaign ties to Russia far earlier uh, with those four people who have really deep ties to Russia, Flynn, Manafort, Page, and Papadop. Yeah, you're right. They're still going to be upset about that. Yeah, they the, the they four will. horsemen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the four horsemen of the political apocalypse. Yeah. <laughs> political apocalypse. That sounds like a good rap lyric. Oh, I it's dig got it. got a lot of alliteration. So we'll keep that in mind for the break it down rap song that we're going to write about the Mueller Report. Very nice. It's only like a six hour long song. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so FBI at this point is investigating them. My bad. Yes. Cool. They were. Uh, crossfire hurricane. But you uh, were also correct in that. Opened they up by would, Comey. Yeah. They would cool. have these documents if they were applying for a government position, right? For something high enough that would require an FD-302? Yeah. That's what I was thinking yeah. was that they would get the F-302, like, right? F302? Regardless. FD-302, No matter, like, any... Like, isn't that what a background check is? No, they don't do... I, you know what? I don't know if the FBI does 302s for background checks. They didn't do one for me, but they might do one at these higher levels. Yeah, but yeah. these weren't background check... Interviews. These oh. were interviews as part of the FBI investigation into Trump campaign Russia Got ties. Got it. Hmm, and cool. so they had already had, Comey already got boxes and boxes of, of, of information uh, in the investigation, the Crossfire Hurricane investigation into those four dudes yeah, yeah. That, hap that began back in 2016. Remember when we all got yeah, mad totally. Comey didn't announce that, that the Trump campaign was under Russian investigation? Right. That was well before Trump became president and before Mueller was appointed. That's this investigation. Okay. Yeah. So cool. that's yes. what we're talking about. Yes. I was not thinking in the context 
Thank you for finding a very nice way to tell me I was severely misguided. <laughs> no, no, it's it. Trust me, it's when each thing started is very yeah. convoluted, and I it, need to work on that in my brain. My brain's not good at that stuff. Like, oh well, that was happening then. I mean, our president just then. happened to commit so many crimes at so many different times. It's like, don't put it on yourself, Jordan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa. Don't, don't get down I'm on yourself. My heart is. <laughs> don't get down on yourself because you can't follow all the president's crimes. Yeah, you used to have <laughs> a life. True. But then you know, <laughs> it's true. You're victim blaming yeah. yourself. <laughs> yes, but every time that I misrepresent a fact or state of affairs, I feel it takes us down a notch as a whole. That's what know? makes you In a general, better like, person. Like Democrats are like anyone that's trying to have a conversation with anyone about this shit that's just wrong as fuck. Can like, I point out that I can't that, be wrong. That's just also. as important I think as having all the facts to it is acknowledging how important facts are. Like that's the whole point of this podcast. So like your yeah. perspective is very enlightening. A lot of people like myself relate to that, you know? Our president doesn't have any awareness of that. So yeah, you're a good person. Thank yeah. you, Joe. So you're For a good sure. person. Yeah. I wouldn't even compare you to our president. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's not fair. That's yeah, that felt rude. that didn't feel as arrow in the heart as it should have. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird I mean, he's only supposed to be the model of the nation, <laughs> it's a, but you know, it's a comb over sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, That's okay. so sad that it's come to that. <laughs> So, yeah, he already had these boxes and boxes of evidence. And the FBI turned that over to Mueller when uh, Mueller took over the was appointed uh, by Rod Rosenstein McCabe. Uh, the page interviews were part of that. And then part of this footnote uh, about the page FBI interviews is redacted for grand jury material. So that's interesting, too. The long and short of Carter Page is that he worked for the Trump campaign. He traveled to Russia in a personal capacity during the Trump campaign. He was uh, close to Russian spies in both 2008 and 2013, which is why he was under investigation this time, because Russia focused on Page in 2016, uh, because they had sec- they have had previous success fucking with him in the past. So <laughs> Mueller, however, could not establish coordination between Page and the Russian government in its efforts to interfere with the election. And and this is a good thing to know, because when Page was under surveillance, uh, because he'd been a Russian asset twice in the past and was now working for Trump, which had multiple suspicious contacts with Russia, Page was no longer with the Trump campaign. So you will hear, hear a lot of Trump supporters saying the Trump campaign was under surveillance, FISA courts, meh. But they didn't start the FISA warrant process on Page until well after he left the campaign. I okay. believe it was in September of 2016. Then we start to get into the history of Carter Page. And this is nothing new to anyone who has listened to our podcast or read the book Russian Roulette, uh, the book by Isakoff and Korn. And this is, that's where they go into great detail about Carter Page being a Russian stooge. For over a decade, from 2004 to 2007, Page was the deputy branch manager of the Merrill Lynch office in Moscow, where he worked on transactions with Gazprom alo- alongside their deputy CFO, Sergei Yatsenko. Mm-hmm. And then in 2008, he founded his own little company called Global Energy Capital, or GEC, which is what I'm going to refer to it uh, as from here on out. And that was an investment management and advisory firm in the energy sector for emerging markets. Then there's a big redacted sentence followed by, quote, the company otherwise had no sources of income, which says to me that whatever's under that redaction bar, redacted for grand jury materials, says something about the main or only source of income for his company. (laughs) Pretty telling stuff there. (laughs) Probably Russia. (laughs) Yeah. Consulting firms are so inherently flawed, right? Because it's like, oh, how are you going to consult me on shit? How are you going to be better at telling me what to do than someone else? Oh, because oh, I have insider secrets. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's their whole business plan. Yeah, I want to yeah. make a consulting firm for a consulting firm. It's just yeah. consulting them on how to consult. There it's are really those. milk it, you know? There are those. Yeah, that Essential is true. consultants is one of those. <gasps> oh my true. God, you're That's so kind right. That's like what Lanny Davis is too. <laughs> right, exactly, <laughs> totally. Um, so, yeah, I, this is redacted for grand jury material. And, and Page actually had to spend a lot of his own savings to stay afloat during that time. Uh, at that point, Page asked Yatsenko to work with him uh, at the GEC, his little dumb company, mm-hmm. on a contingency basis as a consultant. And then there's another redacted statement for grand jury material. That same year, Page met Alexander Bulatov, who was a Russian government official that worked at the Russian consulate in New York. And who Page uh, later found out was a Russian intelligence officer. And then there's another redacted statement for grand jury material. So I'm, I'm curious about these redactions for grand jury materials. Are they from previous investigations into Carter Page and that grand jury? Or are these from Mueller's grand jury and current? And if so, is it Page testifying to the grand jury? I don't know. It's, there's no hints. Yeah, I guess I didn't even consider that myself. So... 
it would it indicate anything like or do you do you speculate it's it's likely one way or the other or is there really no way of telling because it sounds like there's a lot of different options that i'm not even aware of well if it's for the old grand jury which it might be which was the investigation into in 2008 and 2013 into him being a russian asset then you know no bigs we're just referring back to some old shit that we don't want to tell you what happened in the grand jury right but if it's new stuff, does that mean they're still open and ongoing stuff? Mm, okay. Or are we just not allowed to see the new stuff grand jury material because it's grand jury material and Barr said he was going to block any nix that. Okay. So basically, is it relevant still or not? Good questions. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, the Mueller report jumps to 2013 and how another Russian intel officer named Victor, uh, I think it's Podobny. <laughs> wow. Podobny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Victor, uh, who was working covertly in the U.S. under diplomatic cover, so a Russian spy, he formed a relationship with Page, and now we get into Page's history with Podobny, and the footnotes move from grand jury redacted stuff to what's referred to as the Buryakov complaint. So you've heard us talk about the 2013 Russian spy ring that Page was caught up in. We read it in Russian roulette. Two of the Russians fled. One went to prison. That case is the Buryakov case. Uh, Buryakov was arrested on January 26, 2015, charged with and pleaded guilty to spying on the United States for SVR, the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service. Uh, Buryakov uh, was a New York-based deputy representative of Vaneshkanam Bank. Um, he teamed up with two Russians, Igor Sporeshev and this guy, Podobny. Their names are uh, very interesting. So yeah. Pod- Podobny is one of the Russians that got away. Uh, And he met Page at an energy symposium in New York City and started emailing him in a recorded conversation. He told another intelligence officer that Page was interested in business opportunities in Russia, also telling him Page was hooked on Gazprom. Oh, yeah. Uh, And then uh, this next part tickles me because we've used this bit over and over again in our podcast and it made it into the Mueller report. Podobny said he led Page on by feeding him empty promises. And Mueller does a nice job of paraphrasing here. Podobny told the other Russian intelligence officer officer that his method of recruiting foreign sources was to quote promise them favors and then discard them once he obtained relevant information from them oh they censored it (laughs) now of course we know what act what he actually said was i get what i want and i tell him to go fuck himself yeah that's (laughs) got to be in the Mueller movie at least right since they didn't put it in the report so that was nice of Mueller to you know clean it up good old american dad and uh, but he didn't clean up the oh i'm fucked my presidency is over part yeah. for some yeah. reason he's like the people need to know oh, you exactly. only get one fucked in the whole report that's got to be the one maybe he knows what his audience wants <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a pg-13 you get two fucks it's got to be rated r you know? right i see yeah yeah, yeah. they didn't want to do that <laughs> ah, that's um, so true but yeah that's what he did to carter page he he promised him stuff got what he wanted from page and then told him to go fuck himself mm-hmm. so in 2015 the three russians were charged with conspiracy to act as unregistered agents of a foreign government and page was identified in the complaint as male one Uh, Based on the descriptions in the complaint, Page knew he was male one and later introduced himself to a Russian official at the U.N. General Assembly as male one from the Podobny complaint. Uh, What? Does he think it means alpha male or something? (laughs) Look, I'm male number one. Male number one. Male number one. one. Two of my favorite things. Males and one. (laughs) (laughs) M-A-L-E. Page told the officials that he didn't do anything. And then there's a grand jury redaction again for that. So I'm wondering if it's a grand jury, again, grand jury redaction from the Podobny or Buryakov report or Mm -hmm. uh, complaint. Page uh, told the FBI in interviews before Mueller was appointed that he totally hung out with Russian spies, but for sure knew and only gave them immaterial non-public information and that he was totally not part of a back channel. And aren't you guys glad I only gave them non-public immaterial stuff? (laughs) Because the more he gave them, the better for America, right? Right, guys, right? And then looking at the redactions here, it appears that a lot of the grand jury redactions are from that case uh, and seem to come from the FBI 302s in their interviews with Page. Um, This case, not the old one. Yeah. And what I'm starting to think maybe is that there's different types of 302s, like maybe some are when you're applying for a job, but maybe there's different like FD 302s and then other types. Because this sounds like it's Carter Page wouldn't have been applying for anything. He was just being interviewed, right? Yeah. No, so it's a I, different don't kind think of... it, I don't think the FBI 302 is used in background investigations, but right. I could be wrong. But none of these are b- background investigations. Yes, this yeah, is these be... are all investigative in- interviews. Yeah. Another, another silly I just realized is uh, Carter Page wouldn't have even had any reason to get like a background background investigation into him because he didn't have a like official position right, right. so this is a different capacity. form that we're talking than what we were Stupid referring to two. no it's okay we're learning we're all learning yeah <laughs> yes totally so um 
There, there are redactions for grand jury material from the 2013 Buryakov and Podobny complaint, though. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you sort of glean that the further on you read about Mr. Pat Boy here. <laughs> then section B on page 97, we get into Page and, and, and the Trump campaign, right? He started with the campaign in January of 2016 as an informal volunteer. Uh, Page told the campaign he was interested in improving Trump's relationship with Russia and began emailing campaign officials about his thoughts on Russia-U.S. relations. And he prepared talking points and briefing memos on Russia. And he proposed Trump meet with Putin in Moscow. So that's going on. (laughs) In one such communication, Page touted his high-level contacts with the Kremlin. I know spies, bro. Uh, Look, look at my 2013. Look at my 2008. Hanging out with spies. Yeah. (laughs) And one went to prison. Woo, woo. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, he touted his high-level contacts with the Kremlin, uh, who recognized that Trump could have a game-changing effect on the end of the new Cold War with Russia, uh, and that a meeting with Putin could be arranged, and that he closed closed the memo by criticizing U.S. sanctions on Russia. Then there's the entire sentence redacted, an entire sentence redacted as grand jury material. Oh. And that's from this. Yeah, I especially want to know what that says. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. We should rank our favorite redacted parts that we want to know, like based on the context clues around it. Yeah, because I don't know who testified to Mueller's grand jury about Page, but I think we learn a little bit later in some of the footnotes. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like they would be redacted, too. There might be some witness that we don't know about. So, yeah, rando. Then on to March 21st, when Trump named... Page, a foreign policy team member, and continued to work on policy-related matters such as providing feedback for Trump's Mayflower speech. Remember that? Mm-hmm. That's the one where everyone who wanted to give Saudi Arabia nuclear technology hung out. <laughs> it's very ironic, too, because wasn't the Mayflower like the ship that immigrants came on? Uh, the Pilgrims. Pilgrims. Okay. Yeah. So I guess that's kind of like immigrants. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, they were totally immigrants. Yeah, the colonial all, type. Yeah, the white immigrants. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, definitely. The colonizers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they were the undocumented coming into <laughs> for the yeah. illegals the coming to the border yeah. yeah if the native americans did them like they're doing the mexicans now i mean that just it would have been wrong but like it'd yeah it'd have been a fun movie to make honestly i'm thinking yeah i might write it <laughs> uh then part c on page 98 is about uh, carter page's july 2016 trip to moscow and this gets a lot of focus from Mueller. of course ever since page was named a trump policy advisor the russians really came at him he, he's a known stooge he was a no- he's easy to flip And in April 2016, he was invited to give a speech at the July 2016 commencement of the new economic school in Moscow. And I'm going to refer to that as the NES. It's not Nintendo Entertainment System, but it's the new economic school. Yeah, yeah. I might have confused those things myself. (laughs) And just to give a little uh, balance here, Obama delivered the commencement address at NES in 2009. Mm. So, you know, it's not like, (gasps) clutch my pearls. Mm -hmm. Somebody gave an address at this school. Obama did it, too. In this day and age, it seems like that, though. It yeah. does. There's so many trails leading back to the other side benefiting somehow. Mm-hmm. Yep. So uh, Page was excited and Russia was jazzed uh, to have Trump, a Trump campaign aide come to speak. So Page sought approval from the Trump campaign and told them if Trump wanted to speak instead, you can speak. That'd be rad. Uh, Lewandowski said, you go, not an official Trump campaign representative and no Trump can't go. <laughs> so that's that. Hmm. So Page went in July, and a bunch of folks from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs informed the press, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Russia, MFA, informed the press that uh, Trump campaign aide would be there and that they wanted to draw the Russian government's attention to the fact that Page was there. And the footnotes on this page are mostly referring to emails between Russians that were intercepted, emails between Page, Gorka, Lewandowski, and Ferez, and then, of course, uh, some grand jury redacted material. Um, Then there's someone who interviewed with the FBI prior to Mueller's appointment about this case named S. Weber. And I, this is the first time I've heard of this guy. I have no mention of S. Weber in my thousands of pages of research and scripts. His name is Shlomo Weber. Yeah, we would remember that one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, and he's mentioned here, and he's the rector of NES, who told the FBI there was a great deal of interest in having a Trump campaign member speak at the school. So he interviewed with the FBI. Interesting. As well. Shlomo. Yeah, Shlomo Weber. That's what's up. That name sounds familiar. Yeah, you've heard people probably call you that. Not that I would, but the Shlomo. Name Shlomo? <laughs> I've been called a Shlomo. <laughs> well, it's the name of a cool electronic artist, but oh. also I feel like I have heard us talk about it, or maybe I've just read the name. Maybe. Before. How would you spell it? What's the spelling there? S H L O M O. Oh, just as I would mm. assume. Shlomo. Yeah. 
Yeah, phonetically, I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe Jewish I, just, name. I just have such a pool of names up in my head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. We only know like nine million people. <laughs> uh, you, like, I'm just wondering how that name could be inspired. Like, you take a long time, like during labor, slow mo. <laughs> Shlomo. Shlomo. It's, a, it's an old Jewish name. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's my ignorance showing. There you go. That I was a Shlomo to that joke. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll see myself out. Nice. She'll be here all week. Slowly. <laughs> then on to... <laughs> Slowly, Shlomo came in. <laughs> inch by inch. Then on to page 100, when Dennis Klementov, uh, which sounds like an olive to me, but it's not, mm. emailed Maria... Zakharova, the director of the MFA, and copied his brother, Dmitry Klementov. Oh, my God. Um, he said, uh, hey, MFA, a Trump campaign guy is coming to speak at our school. He's totally gullible and kind of an idiot. <laughs> and then I'm paraphrasing. And then Dmitry contacted the Russian press secretary, Peskov, who we've heard of mm-hmm. before. That's one of the Cohen contacts for mm-hmm. the uh, Trump, Trump Tower. Tower. Yeah. And he replied, yeah, Page is a nobody moron. I'm not going to introduce him to anyone at the Kremlin so <laughs> wise choice fair yeah, and, and he didn't I'm, again I'm paraphrasing so we get the feeling here that Paige is a nobody poser that's super easy to recruit but stupid so useless <laughs> and the Russians figure uh, this tool isn't going to have anything of import we can get from uh, the Trump campaign not like Manafort or Flynn mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. he's um, a stone like character yes exactly yeah. or, or like a Corsi it was me it was my tweet that got the WikiLeaks thing mm-hmm. you know just people running around trying to take credit for the yeah, for the Russia contacts. Perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a and, bit. Mm-hmm. And then trying to get a job with Trump. Just butt kissers, basically brown nosers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're like too low level to have really been influential enough for mm-hmm. them to be a true target exactly of anything. Totally. To like a big degree, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, like the, I, I think Russia just looks like... Although Roger Stone is in some pretty deep shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. But I'm thinking more like <laughs> Papadopoulos people are like... Uh, well, yeah, Stone had direct contacts with uh, yes. WikiLeaks, whereas Corsi did not. So it's more yes. of a Corsi figure. Exactly. You know, trying to lie about and tell Mueller, oh, I tweeted it. And then Mueller yeah, yeah. Find any tweets. And Stone's yeah. in serious shit, but he's also a joke. So I see where you're coming That's from. That's more what I meant. <laughs> yeah, the carnival yeah. leader yeah, character definitely. that we speak of. You mm-hmm. know? Indeed. Just like, a they're like, weird group of dudes. Let yeah. me play. And yeah. A comedic like, gift that keeps okay, on you giving. Can play a little bit, and then they're like, okay, yeah. I did this. That's <laughs> bad. Wait, I didn't do that. Yeah, you have to be this tall to commit treason or something like yeah. that. comes to mind. Yeah. Totally, totally. Uh, yeah, he's just a kind of a useless boob. I think mm-hmm. is the best way yeah. to describe him. And 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 Rush is like, dude, he's easily recruited, but he can't get us anything of value. Right. Because he's so down and no one everyone thinks he's an idiot. Mm-hmm. Um so but some people are like, watch out, he's a genius. And oh my goodness. I don't, I don't know. But you know, maybe he's a secret cool. genius. Maybe he's watch a, out, he's a genius. Maybe he's a closeted genius. <laughs> a closeted genius. <laughs> can't figure it out. Uh, on July seventh, Page gave his first two speeches criticizing the US Russia policy and then or the U.S.'s policy about Russia. Then uh, on July 8th, he delivered the other, at which point Russian Deputy Prime Minister and NES board member, board member Arkady Dvorkovich. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, Dvorkovich is a good name. Yeah, Arcadia uh, too. He spoke after Page saying that the sanctions hurt the NES. And Shlomo Weber remembered Dvorkovich making <laughs> statements to Page that they should work together in the future. And then there's some grand jury redacted material. So. <laughs> mm. I like Shlomo Weber too. That's also yeah, a cute Shlomo name. Weber and yeah, Dvorkovich. Yeah. I dig the names in these, you know, shady characters. Like <laughs> crap of often slip and chuck or yeah, whatever their names yeah. are. <laughs> I'm all for an adorable name. Yeah. This is a this is a lot of stuff. It is. Yeah. It goes by pretty quickly too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we broke Jordan. <laughs> no, well, I I no, I more so mean like outside of the things that we really focused on up until this point that the report itself was released like we hadn't talked about this extensively oh totally right yeah yeah Yeah. for sure and and uh it i mean we did we covered it but like over a year Mm -hmm. right this is all like you know now it's all part by part yeah Yeah. right in this little condensed delicious report that, mm-hmm. that it's all like this this report is our podcast summed up in 400 yeah, pages absolutely so this deputy prime minister the one who um remembered arkady dvorkovich speaking to page after page spoke uh he's not the same deputy prime minister that was on a yacht with nastia ribka and Deripaska getting briefs about the trump campaign he got from Konstantin kalimnik that was uh sergey Pr- prokoto Pr- 
Precode Co. I'm just <laughs> impressed that you got through all the other names, and that's Precode the only Co. one you stumbled on. These are a lot of interesting names. Precode Co. <laughs> Dvorkovich became deputy prime minister in May of 2012. Uh, Precode Co. in May of 2013. They both left their posts in May of 2018. There's a bunch of deputy prime ministers at any given time, and they're all temporary positions. And it kind of makes me wonder why Trump only likes acting secretaries mm-hmm. because the Russian government does, doesn't does like permanent deputy yeah, prime ministers. Yeah, he likes acting wives too and all kinds of things. <laughs> Everything's had a temporary and I wonder if Putin at some point said to him, you know, you should try more temporary uh, Oh, it's probably a strategy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that way with my prime ministers, I can deputy prime ministers, I can just get rid of them whenever I want. Damn. Dude, I swear, if all of their meetings are not just, hey, so you have any tips on world domination? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, it's like the gig economy, right? Like everyone's an independent contractor now. I feel like it's hitting the White House too. <laughs> it's like we're all hurting from the economy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Acting yeah. vice presidents. Yeah, I like I like the the meetings on how to take over the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so Page said during his time in Moscow, he met with old buddies he knew from the last time Russia duped him, <laughs> including uh, Andrei Baranov, a former Gazprom employee who is now the head of investor relations at Rosneft. Mm. And Page told the FBI that he and Bar- uh, Baranov just shot the shit, basically, and that he only gave him immaterial and non-public information. <laughs> Oddly, the same phrase he used in 2013 when the Russians recruited him. Remember when these like, no, I only gave him immaterial and non-public information. Those exact words. <laughs> so he's using them again, which leads me to believe they didn't talk about non-public immaterial information. Page says maybe possibly they talked about Igor Sechin, the president of Rosneft, and maybe they might have mentioned in passing the sale of a stake in Rosneft. And Page might have possibly mentioned he was working with the Trump campaign. Maybe. <laughs> Totally, he did all that. Uh, I'm sure of it. And on Ju- that's beans, though. And on July 8th, while he was in Moscow, Page emailed campaign officials, Trump campaign officials, saying he'd send a readout of some amazing insights and outreach from Russian leaders. And on July 9th, he emailed Clovis this. He said, Russian Deputy Prime Minister and NES board member Arkady Dvorkovich also spork- spoke. <laughs> spork. <laughs> they use sporks when they eat KFC Kosla. Nice. Also spoke before the event. In a private conversation, Dvorkovich expressed strong support for Mr. Trump and a desire to work together toward devising better solutions in response to the vast range of current international problems. Based on feedback from a diverse array of other sources close to the presidential administration, it was readily apparent that this sentiment is widely held at all levels of government. And you know what? That's a pretty well-written email. So Mm -hmm. that's probably why he got fired from the Trump campaign. (laughs) He writes too well. Yeah. So then there's a big redacted paragraph, which starts with, despite these representations to the campaign... Then there's a huge redacted section, and then it ends with, the office was unable to obtain additional evidence or testimony about who Page may have met or communicated with in Moscow. Thus, Page's activities in Russia, as described in his emails with the campaign, were not fully explained. Hmm. And I'm sure that big redacted grand jury part uh, is about Page's meeting with, or not meeting with, uh, Igor Sechin, and a discussion um, about a commission, perhaps, for the sell-off of Rosneft, which incidentally was brokered by the Qatar Investment Authority, who I personally think is the secret company from Country A fighting a secret subpoena battle in court right now. It was uh, in the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, and when Mueller was appointed to the case, that was handed off to Mueller, and then when Mueller closed up shop, it was handed back to the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office. And that's just a guess. I certainly hope Congress gets the grand jury material. Uh, Just last week, actually, the House voted to circumvent a full the requirement of a full House vote when the committee wants to take some someone defying a subpoena to court. So if the judiciary subpoenas and the grant. So if the judiciary subpoenas, the grand jury materials and the Department of Defense refuses or bar refuses, they can vote to hold him in contempt and then file a lawsuit immediately to petition the court without having to go through the Department of Justice or without having to hold a full vote on the floor of the House of Representatives. That's kind of a cool thing. I still wish they would open an impeachment inquiry. They wouldn't have to do any of this shit at all. Then we go to part, they could just go straight to court. Mm-hmm. Then we go to part D on page 102 called later campaign work and removal from the campaign. And and these are pretty much the last pathetic, desperate days of Page's work on the campaign. <laughs> and after the Republican National Convention, where Page met with Russian Ambassador Kislyak, Page's continuing advocacy for pro-Russian foreign policy drew a lot of media attention. And eventually the Trump campaign began distancing itself from him until ultimately firing him. Not because you're covering anything up or anything. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Yeah, you shouldn't like his hat anymore. <laughs> We've had enough, man. We all got together and decided it's We'd time for you to go. Hat enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Where's a rim shot when you need it? We got to get a soundboard going. 
That's good stuff. <laughs> We've had enough with your cover up. <laughs> All right, on to part four, guys. Page 103. Now, this is Dimitri Symes in the Center for National Interest. I'm going to refer to them as CNI from now on. Dimitri Symes is the CEO of CNI, and uh, the Trump campaign met with CNI and Symes on multiple occasions. In April 2016, Trump gave a speech for an event organized by CNI, which is a think tank with expertise and connections to the Russian government. Jeff Sessions and Kislyak were in attendance, which gained some attention and was brought up in Sessions' confirmation hearings as a result. Uh, that's where we get the, uh, I did not have any uh, communications with the Russians. Mm-hmm. I did not, yeah, that whole thing. Um, a time or two. <laughs> Kush also interacted, Kush, Kushner, with Symes about Russian issues during the campaign. But Mueller says here that the investigation could not identify uh, any evidence that the campaign passed or received any messages to or from the Russian government through CNI or Symes. And he actually says the words could not identify any evidence, which is different from was unable to locate evidence or had insufficient evidence. So here it actually says there was no evidence that the Trump campaign was trying to pass messages back and forth between the CNI or Symes. They just did it out in the open. (laughs) Section A outlines how CNI and Symes connected with the Trump campaign. First, CNI, uh, as I said, is a D.C.-based nonprofit that grew out of a center founded by Richard Nixon. Hmm. It publishes a bi-monthly... God, yeah. The shaky foundation. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Shaky foundation, yeah. (laughs) Like earthquake. Totally. (laughs) And uh, let's see, uh, he, it publishes a bi-monthly magazine called National Interest, and it's overseen by a board of directors that are largely honorary, uh, like Kissinger, and Jeff Sessions, Sessions is on there, too. Symes has already was. Symes himself was uh, born in the former Soviet Union and immigrated to the United States in the 1970s. According to footnotes, most of this information uh, is, uh, came from a 302 when the FBI interviewed Symes prior to Mueller's appointment. So all of these connections mm-hmm. were already being investigated before Mueller was even appointed. That is so interesting. Yeah. And on March 14th, 2016, 16, the CNI set up a luncheon to recruit new board members. And Kushner was at that event because the Trump campaign was having trouble securing support from foreign policy professionals. Because <laughs> they're, they're, I guess all the foreign policy professionals uh, on the globe were like, nah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's according to an interview uh, the office conducted with Kushner. And this is Mueller. Um, after Mueller was appointed, interviewing Kush. Uh, Kush and Symes talked by phone March 24th, three days after Trump set up that foreign policy team that he sent that Insta photo out about, that he then tried to deny Papadopoulos was anything more than a coffee boy or whatever. And on March 31st, they met in person, um, Symes and Kushner did, at Kushner's office in New York. Uh, Symes also had contacts with other members of the Trump campaign, and on June 17th, he sent an email to J.D. Gordon with a memo to Senator Jeff Sessions attached that proposed building a small group of experts to attack Hillary for her foreign policy and suggest a new beginning with Russia. And Symes asked Gordon to share that memo with Sessions. And then we get to part B, um, the event at the Mayflower Hotel. And Kush and Symes had agreed in their March phone calls to set up a policy speech event to be coordinated with Sessions and his chief of staff, Rick Dearborn. Remember that guy? Mm-hmm. And Kush put Symes in contact with Stephen Miller, who had prepared the outline for the foreign policy speech. So he wrote that thing, that Mayflower speech. Then they went back and forth making edits. Uh, and only half of them remember seeing the draft and Mueller couldn't find the draft. So this is probably wow. one of those situations where they used encrypted emails and that's why he didn't have enough evidence. Mm-hmm. Um, two of the guys that allegedly helped with the speech that worked with CNI helped coordinate the event. Their names are Bert and Saunders. And the footnotes... <laughs> Bert and Saunders? Not not a, like a weird code name for Bernie Sanders. That was like just the yeah. weird... <laughs> <laughs> saying it out. Yeah, Bert yeah. and Saunders. Okay, I, have, cool. I have a quick question really quick. Yeah. Um, if they had found evidence, is that against the law? To be crafting essentially a message on behalf or in support of... A different uh crafting entity. a message no but getting dirt on hillary clinton to help you in the campaign yes if you can prove it has value mm-hmm. yeah 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 i think it has value I don't... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah and we'll get and there's some interesting stuff about dirt that is promised here and it, it ends up being kind of like a second june uh 2016 trump tower meeting mm. it, gets, it gets crazy so uh, Burton Saunders, the footnotes at the bottom of page 105 indicate the FBI interviewed both of them prior to Mueller being appointed. So Saunders set up the pre-event cocktail hour mm-hmm, 
with the understanding that everyone would get to meet Trump and there'd be like a meet and greet and the event would be very small and very exclusive. The invitees included Sessions and Kislyak and Symes told Kislyak he'd get to meet Trump. Um, Public reports said that in addition to Kushner, Kislyak met and spoke with Sessions, though Sessions told investigators as well as Congress he did not remember that meeting. Mueller says it appears that uh, that's the one where he's like, I bumped into a guy, but I don't know. I didn't talk to him. I'm a little worried about Sessions. He doesn't remember much. I'm like, was he like roofie that night? He's like, <laughs> I don't remember. I bumped into a guy. The entire know. Trump campaign was roofie. Yeah, yeah. I do not recall. The entire year of 2016. Yeah. <laughs> they are totally the kind of bros that would buy roofies off the black market and roofie themselves. Yeah, and just so they crying. could masturbate and not remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, okay, this is our game plan. We should be good till we all fall asleep and never remember anything. <laughs> What's yeah. that from 40 year old virgin i'm gonna get real drunk and or get real high and try to masturbate uh, uh, and see if i can finish the, the <laughs> good news is is that you always win or something like that it's amazing i love part, that movie you always win yeah. um so <laughs> <clears throat> so K- kislyak met with kushner and he spoke with sessions um though se- like i said sessions you know i did not have any contact with the russians Mueller says it appears that the meeting was small and public much like kislyak's meeting with kushner the one with Sessions, Mueller was not able to find any evidence that Trump spoke with Kislyak during the event. Trump spoke with Kislyak. Uh, on to Part C, page 107, regarding Sessions' post-speech interactions with CNI. So after Sessions' idiotic confirmation hearings, people started wondering what the hell with his CNI contacts <laughs> during the campaign and whether or not he had other contacts with them or Kislyak outside of the Mayflower event. Hmm. Uh, and ding, 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 he sure did. <laughs> uh, regarding Kislyak, Sessions ran into him May 23rd at a different CNI event, just happened to be there. And according to the seating chart provided by Saunders, Sessions was seated right next to Kislyak at the same table. <laughs> But Sessions didn't recall that. Some folks remember seeing Kislyak there. Others denied it. And Kislyak didn't appear in any of the photos. Just couldn't prove it. Hmm. Wow. Then in the summer of 2016, CNI uh, set up two more dinners for Sessions to meet with foreign policy experts. Remember, he's part of that clown car foreign policy group. And uh, <clears throat> the dinners included that Burt guy and a dude named Zalmay Khalilzad. And these, these dinners included that Burt guy and a dude named Zalmay Khalilzad. Khalilzad. And he's a former U.S. ambassador to Iraq and Afghanistan. Khalilzad also met with Sessions one-on-one apart from the two dinners. And during the dinners, but during the dinners, they talked about Russian policy and NATO. But Sessions also asked Khalilzad for draft memos, to draft memos for him about Hillary's foreign policy shortcomings and Egypt. And that's all very interesting because, as we know, everyone who attended the Mayflower meeting lied about their contacts with Russia. It all seems to have point, uh, to have a pointed interest in the grand bargain. That's five nation, six nation bargain that, that Seth Abramson's been writing massive books about. Oh, yeah. And includes Egypt uh, in there. And so it's, it's just interesting that that's part of that. But there's no other information in the Mueller report about this. This would all probably likely be counterintelligence information mm-hmm. or a, a part of an open and ongoing investigation. But there's no redactions here that indicate that. So I would say counterintelligence uh, investigation stuff. Um, so that we continue on to page 108, section D, Kushner's continuing contacts with Symes and CNI. And between the Mayflower event and the election, Kushner had a few interactions with Symes and CNI, both in person and by phone, uh, to discuss how to move forward with Russia and the idea, that idea of getting a small group of advisors together to address it. And Symes told, told Mueller that he, not Kush, initiated all the communications and that Kush never asked him to set up a back channel with Russia. He actually said that. Hmm. <clears throat> no, I, it was all me. He never asked to set up a back channel. I could see him like, I didn't say anything about mm-hmm. a back channel. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and he told Kush um, not to be hush-hush with Russia and to handle Russia contacts with care. And Kushner told Mueller roughly the same account of the characterization of those discussions. So Mueller was like, well, that's all I got. Mm-hmm. So Mueller then highlights a specific meeting between Kush and Symes. That took place August 17th, 2016, at Symes' request in Kushner's New York office. And the meeting was basically how to smear Hillary's foreign policy and her Russia-related attacks on candidate Trump. And remember in the debate, she called him Putin's puppet? Yeah, there, he, that I, was a yeah, classic moment there. <clears throat> yeah, there, he, He's like, I'm not a puppet, you're a puppet. Yeah, 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 uh-huh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you nasty woman. <laughs> yeah, but that was basically what they were getting together to try to figure out, how to counter these attacks that... that He's a Putin puppet. Mm-hmm. So ahead of the meeting, uh, Symes sent a memo outlining what he thought Trump should say about Russia. And he mentioned, quote, a well-documented story about questionable connections between Bill Clinton and the Russian government. 
parts of which have uh, even been discussed with the FBI and the CIA in the 1990s. Cush forwarded the memo to Stephen Miller, Manafort, and Gates, with the subject suggestion only. Uh, Manafort scheduled a meeting with Symes, but Manafort was fired before he could meet with him, and so Symes only met with Cush. And let me read you the next paragraph, because this is fun. During the August 17th meeting, Symes provided Kushner with the Clinton-related information he had promised. Symes told Kushner, then there's a redacted paragraph for personal privacy. And then Symes claimed he received this information from former CIA and Reagan White House official Fritz Ermarth, who claimed to have learned it from U.S. intelligence and not Russian intelligence. <clears throat> so this right here is dirt on Bill Clinton exchanging hands wow. between a U.S. citizen, former Soviet, with ties to the Kremlin, to Kushner. And to me, this is bigger than the June 6, 2019, or June but, 9th, 2016 Trump Tower meeting. And taking information that was obtained by U.S. intelligence. So, so to say, you know. That's what he's saying. Allegedly. Okay. Yeah, some guy named Fritz Ermarth. Wow. He used to work for the government? <clears throat> former CIA and Reagan White House official. Yeah. That's where he claimed he received the information from. Mueller doesn't say that it's real or not. Um, but there's obviously some dirt on Bill Clinton under that privacy redaction. Mm -hmm. uh, and Kushner decided not to use it, uh, use that dirt, because it's, quote, old news. And then <laughs> Kushner told Mueller he believed, this is so great. He said, Kushner said, he believed there was little chance of something new being revealed about the Clintons because of their long careers in public service and that he never received any dirt that could be operationalized for the Trump campaign. Symes uh, recalled sharing the same dirt with a small group of people organized for Jeff Sessions. But right here, when Cush is like, ah, the Clintons are too clean, we're not going to find anything on them. Like, <laughs> you just basically admitted that. Right. Or he turned it down because it would be projecting to some level, right? They don't want to, like, put anything out that could be used against them, like, start the conversation about something that they're also doing. No, no, not so much. I mean, I, yes, but my point is, is that Kushner just said Clinton's clean, squeaky mm -hmm. clean. Right, right. There's not, there's, she's nothing a great person. Nothing worth pursuing. No, yet. she's a great person. She's a great candidate for president. There's nothing on her. There's no contacts with Russia. And this bill thing is old news. I can't, I'm not going to be able to find anything on right, her. Right, right. She's great. Yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> and so that's basically what he said to her. But yes, you're totally right. And on the other hand. Yeah, depending on what that redacted stuff is, I wonder if it is some stuff that could be well, if it's Bill, I don't blame her necessarily, you know. So, yeah, maybe she is squeaky clean. Well, I mean, they would still hold it against her. They would. But, but he, he didn't use it because it's old news. And you're right. And uh, to an extent, he may might not have wanted to release this because people would start asking, where'd you get that? Fucking yeah. Shit. Where'd you get yeah. that shit from, bro? Especially mm -hmm. if it was, it's stuff on Bill Clinton, right? Yeah. Especially if it was something sexual, in which case Trump probably has a whole trove of people that have blackmail on him in that world. Totally. Yeah, I, I have a feeling, although I don't know for sure, um, that it's just some connection he had with Russia in the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the dirt. But then it would also be difficult for them to release dirt on Bill Clinton with the Russians when they're Doing conspiring so many, with the Russians. Exactly. Similarly to the sexual stuff. Yeah, exact same problem, really. Yeah, yeah but you're right. Maybe it's just totally sexual and weird. Yeah. yeah, some weird sex. It's like hold my beer in. moment for them, you know? Like, that'd be really hard to, for any either of <laughs> the parties. With, yeah. We do know it has to do with Russia, though. Okay. Yeah. Cl uh, Clinton something Russia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> what it is? Mm? Clinton's sexual ties to Russia. <laughs> yeah. Who, I, who, you, really, Everyone's who knows? Everyone's got him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we talk a lot about the June 6th Trump Tower meeting, like I said, and how Junior was happy to seek dirt from a foreign adversary for that meeting. If, if, if it's what you say, I love it, especially later in the summer. And now here's Kushner's own dirt meeting. Um, both men, Kushner and Trump Jr., were not jazzed with what they got, but they both actively sought assistance from Russia and then lied to cover it up. And that's illegal enough, right, I think? That's huge. Right, yeah. Now, it doesn't say why they didn't charge Kushner here. It did say, uh, you know, why they didn't charge Jr. for the Trump Tower meeting. And that was because you have to know... Mm, Mentria. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And they don't mention that here. Interesting. So... How is this dirt? You know, why is this okay? Exactly. But the junior stuff wasn't, but that ended up being okay because junior was too stupid to be yeah. charged. And maybe really none of it's okay. And Miller's just like, guys, look, <laughs> there's so many examples. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He right, just... but why he couldn't charge Kushner with a crime here? Well, of would, accepting and, a, an in kind campaign contribution from a foreign adversary. Miller didn't charge anyone really close to Trump in that way. So I feel like he's probably saving that for 
Congress, right, or the people? Because otherwise, I mean, he would have charged a lot more people. Congre- or prohibiting him from charging them. It's right. not like there's an OLC opinion or something. But then in that case, I think he would charge all of them. That. I think I know what it is. Um, Dimitri Symes is a U.S. citizen. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not a foreign adversary. It's one of those, remember how we were very careful to say that Mueller could not establish a crime of conspiracy between the Trump campaign and members of the Russian government. Oh. Symes is not a member of the Russian government. Right. But if he conspired with them, then yeah. that's their middle guy. That's their almost a fall guy. But you can't charge him with conspiring with the Russian government if he's not a member of the Russian exactly. government. He's a United States citizen. Yeah, it's or a safeguard not, for them. Or, or if he's proved to be an agent of the Kremlin by being on their payroll somehow, do you think that would be sufficient? Yeah, maybe mm. that's part of the counterintelligence or an open and ongoing investigation, though there are no redactions for that in this section. So yeah. again, I would tend to put that in the counterintelligence uh, mm. area or... Mueller just saw nothing wrong with this, hmm. which is weird to me because it seems like if he's a Russian agent or acting on behalf of the Kremlin, you should not be able to take anything of value from him. Yeah, yeah. And whether you use it or not, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's the act of. So, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Follow the rubles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out maybe. Yeah, I guess. That's the best part of all this. No one ever knows, really. Yeah. No, nah, I'm kidding. That's not the best part. I mean, I'm just hoping that something will be done about this. Like, I know that all the Congress people are, like, reading this report, too, as we are. And I'm like, I wonder if they're thinking the same thing, you know? Like, Well, I'm sure that's what Adam Schiff and his whole, uh, tra- you know, set, uh, if you the- think it's okay to... <clears throat> like listing out everything. Yeah, that and the House Epic Intel is mm-hmm. Yeah, that and the House Intel Committee is subpoenaing the counterintelligence information yep. because that that report, quote unquote, has gone walkies, mm-hmm. um, as Matto would say. There's just nothing about it. And then they had these two old FBI agents come in and talk about what counterintelligence is, but we don't have any. As far as I know, there's no publicly reported information that's been handed over on the counterintelligence investigation, which is huge. Yeah, Yeah, that's like a big can of beans right there. That's really important work that he's doing, opening that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and apparently Barr has agreed to start handing stuff over. That's Mm -hmm. what, you know, in, in... in interest of abeyance of his contempt vote, which they put off. But we we don't know if he started handing out over counterintelligence information. And even if he does, I don't know if we'll ever know what it is. Yeah, that's some juicy stuff right there. All right, guys. So that's it. Those are uh, those are those two parts of part four. This part four has like a million parts. OK, it's not part five. It's part. It's our part five. It's part it's four, a- but it's our part five. Yes. I see what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So this is like episode five, but we're still on part four. There's going to be like five or six parts to part four. Mm-hmm. So part six is going to be about p- part four. Part seven is going to be about. P- I know it's I confusing. Feel, yeah. No, it makes sense now. Thank you for explaining it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that was Carter Page and Dimitri Symes, Center for National Interest. Very and, interesting. And we'll be back next Thursday with uh, part six, which is still part four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Spread the word. And uh, we'll, we'll be sure to put the page numbers uh, in the uh, description for you so that you'll know what to read uh, ahead of uh, listening. Yeah, get your highlighters ready. People have like note cards. I've seen the pictures. They tweet us all the time. Yeah, people yeah. have their highlighted. The coffee with their Moshi wrote mug. Margin notes. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. I yeah. love so it. Cool. They're set up, man. I love that you guys are into this. Uh, and I love that you're reading it and uh, share it with as many people as you can. It's free on Kindle. Uh, our episodes are free, so mm-hmm. you know, share them widely. Yeah, we say fuck sometimes, but and some people don't like that. Hey, but, it's you okay. Know. We're rated R. Some <clears throat> some things are not. I think we're PG thirteen. Oh, you think so? Until unless the PP tapes come out, we yeah. Might, but that's not our fault. Maybe the Daily Beans will be more PG thirteen. <laughs> More sure. We're like, yeah. I think Daily Beans will probably be PG. We'll get that's like, how a I'm shit feeling. The- Cunt in there. Yeah, so, so that's why we get it out later. now, so we Damn can it. clean up later. <laughs> yeah. Shit and cunt. That's yeah. where you went. Back to back. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you yeah. know the lesser. I because over in Europe, um, c word is not a bad word. Yeah, that's, that's when in Rome. True. When in when in Rome. When in Rome. <laughs> in <laughs> London room. <laughs> when in, when in oh, room. oops! I said your name. Oops. Oh, well, fifty-one nineteen. No worries. You just <laughs> the whole thing. Just bleep it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Uh, three, two, one. All <laughs> okay. right, guys, that's uh, that's it from my London room, and uh, <laughs> we get to bleep that name out. Uh, it's been a long week, but thank you so much for listening. Please, guys, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. I've been Ag. I've been Jaleesa Johnson. I've been Jordan Coburn. Ciao. This is Mueller. She wrote. I don't know. Where I like that. It, it like was Chow. a run in Rome. No, Chow was relevant. Yeah, I Chow. dig that. Oh yeah, because that was quick. Thanks. Yes. All right. Bye.
Mike Muller, She Wrote is produced and engineered by AG with editing and logo design by Jaleesa Johnson. Our marketing consultant and social media manager is Sarah Lee Steiner, and our subscriber and communications director is Jordan Coburn. Fact-checking and research by AG, and research assistance by Jaleesa Johnson and Jordan Coburn. Our merchandising managers are Sarah Lee Steiner and Sarah Hirschberger Valencia. Our web design and branding are by Joel Reeder with Moxie Design Studios, and our website is MullerSheWrote.com. 